welcome to a culinary escapade like no other. Join us as we explore the vibrant streets of Chengdu, Sichuan, to uncover the top 10 culinary delights that define the essence of this culinary paradise. From fiery Sichuan peppercorns to mouth-watering noodles, get ready to savor the bold flavors that make Chengdu a gastronomic wonder. Let the feast begin. Step back in time to 1841 in Zigong, Sichuan, where the tale of Dan Dan noodles begins. Born from the ingenuity of a vendor, these noodles gained fame and flourished in Chengdu, the vibrant capital of Sichuan province. Picture the lively streets as peddlers balance their livelihood on a shoulder pole, a culinary ballet unfolding at each end. On one side, a coal-fired stove and a pot brought to life the flavors of Dan Dan noodles, on the other, a symphony of bowls, chopsticks, ingredients, seasonings, and a bucket for washing. And so, the noodle earned its moniker, Dan Dan, paying homage to the humble shoulder pole. In the modern era, these street vendors may have vanished, but the legacy of Dan Dan Neon lives on, gracing the menus of restaurants and snack bars. Enter the world of Sichuan Dan Dan noodles, a culinary marvel that tantalizes the taste buds with its spicy and tangy thin noodles. Join us on a journey to savor the allure of Dan Dan noodles, where tradition meets innovation, and each bowl tells a story of Chengdu's rich culinary heritage. Let's prepare some vegetables. First, the green onions. Take a generous amount of green onions and thinly slice them. We are going to use the white parts for and the green parts for garnish. Make sure to keep them separated. Once that's done, use three cloves of garlic and finely chop them. Get yourself a small knob of ginger and finely chop it. For this, I highly recommend using a fine grater, you certainly don't want chunky ginger in your dan dan noodles. This certainly will destroy your creation. Now, let's prepare the baby bok choy. Blanch the bok choy. Let's now make the sauce. First, let's talk about the Sichuan peppercorns. Rather than just using them as is, it's always better to toss them in a frying pan for a minute or two. This always gives a better result. Now grind the Sichuan peppercorns. Next step, add 1.5 tablespoons of soy sauce, dark soy sauce, 2 tablespoons of sesame paste, half tablespoon of chicken bouillon powder, 1 tablespoon of vinegar, 1 teaspoon of sugar, 1 teaspoon of Sichuan peppercorns powder, 2 tablespoon of chili oil. Mix together until it is well combined. In a separate bowl, combine 4 tablespoons chili flakes, 1 tablespoon of minced garlic, 1 quarter cup of the chopped white part of the green onion, 1 cup of neutral oil and give it a good stir. Now, all you got to do is microwave it for 3 minutes. That's it. Incredible and simple. For your information, you can keep this concoction in the fridge for a month. Right, the sauce is done. Let's get cooking. Add a tablespoon of oil to pan, and heat over a medium to high heat. Once it gets nice and hot, add the pork. Using a spatula, make sure to break up the pork so it does not come together. Once the pork is no longer pink, add the remaining part of the green onions, garlic, ginger, one quarter cup of yak eye and cook together for three minutes. When the fat from the pork is rendered down and infused with the vegetables, your flavorful topping is ready. Once the pork is cooked through, take everything out of the pan and set it aside. Cook the noodles and blanch the bok choy for 30 seconds and set eye aside. Once the noodles are cooked, take them out. You are now ready to assemble the dish. Put half of the sauce in a bowl and plus one quarter cup of chicken stock. You can save time by using water as a substitute. Once everything is well combined, place the noodles in a bowl. Top the noodles with your pork and decorate with the baby bok choy. Add some extra chili oil or Sichuan peppercorn powder, depending on your preference. Last, but not least, show your love by sprinkling your creation with some green onion. 
All right, it's done. Now it's the perfect time to indulge. We hope you're inspired to recreate the magic of Dan Dan noodles in your own kitchen. The tantalizing blend of spicy and tangy flavors, the unique minced meat, and the symphony of textures await your culinary exploration. Remember, the heart of this dish lies not just in the ingredients but in the joy of crafting something extraordinary. So, gather your tools, embrace the dance of flavors, and embark on a journey that transcends time and place. Welcome to a culinary journey into the heart of Sichuan flavors with our featured dish, Red Braised Pork Trotters. A delectable masterpiece that transforms humble pork feet into a symphony of taste and texture. Let's dive into the art of crafting this savory delight. To begin, we start with 3 pounds of pork feet, meticulously cleaned, hair removed, and cut into generous chunks. Our culinary canvas unfolds with a fragrant medley of ingredients, including ginger, scallions, cinnamon, star anise, sugar, soy sauce, dark soy sauce, shaoxing wine, and bay leaves. The culinary alchemy begins by boiling the pork feet. discarding the water and pan frying until they achieve a tantalizing golden brown hue. In the same pot, a dance of aromatics unfolds as ginger, scallions, cinnamon, and star anise infuse the surroundings with their fragrance. The sugar takes center stage, melting into a rich caramel that sets the tone for the robust flavors to come. As we stir in the soy sauce, dark soy sauce, and Shaoxing wine, the pot comes alive with a symphony of tastes, each ingredient contributing to the complex and savory profile. The pork feet make their grand return, absorbing the rich concoction before being bathed in a savory pool of water. Bay leaves join the ensemble, and the lid is sealed for a slow and flavorful simmer, allowing the magic to unfold over an hour and a half. Unveiling the pot reveals a rich, reduced sauce that clings to the succulent pork trotters. A final burst of heat reduces the sauce to perfection, bringing our red braised pork trotters to life. Get ready to savor this culinary masterpiece, where each bite tells a tale of tradition, meticulous preparation, and the rich tapestry of Sichuan cuisine. Red braised pork trotters, a celebration of flavors that transcends the ordinary, inviting you to experience the heart and soul of Chengdu's culinary heritage. Mapo tofu is a popular Chinese dish from Sichuan province, where spicy food is king and the signature spice of the region, the Sichuan peppercorn, gives dishes a unique numbing effect. For Mapo tofu, the signature spice, the Sichuan peppercorn, takes center stage, imparting not just fragrance and flavor but a unique numbing effect that intensifies the heat. It's an exquisite dance of sensations that elevates this classic to extraordinary heights, now, let's dive into the heart of this recipe for traditional and authentic Sichuan Mapo Tofu. Picture this, soft cubes of silken tofu, flavorful bits of ground pork, scallions, and the undeniable presence of Sichuan peppercorns, all enveloped in a spicy sauce that's nothing short of culinary magic. Let the culinary adventure begin. Start by chopping our Asian trinity, three large cloves of garlic, two ounces of ginger, and three green onions. Add a chili for those who crave an extra kick of spice, totally optional but highly recommended for fellow spice enthusiasts like myself. Now, prepare the enchanting sauce that will bring this dish to life. In a small mixing bowl, 
combine 2 tablespoons of tabanjong, 1 tablespoon of vegetarian oyster sauce, 1 tablespoon of soy sauce, 1 tablespoon of Shaoxing wine, optional, 1 tablespoon of black vinegar, and 1 teaspoon of sugar or agave nectar. Set this flavor elixir aside, it's the secret to the dish's depth. Next, take a block of silken tofu, drain all the liquid, and cut it into 3 quarters inch cubes. Now, heat a cast iron wok over medium heat, add cooking oil, chili oil, garlic, ginger, chili, and green onions. Let the kitchen fill with the aromatic dance of these ingredients for about a minute. Then introduce 1 teaspoon of Sichuan peppercorn powder, a game changer in this symphony of flavors. Bring in your protein of choice, ground pork, beef, chicken, lamb, turkey, crumbled tofu, mushrooms, or plant-based meat, letting it cook until fully done. Now, it's time to pour in the sauce mixture and stir-fry everything together for another 2-3 to three minutes. Aromas intertwine, flavors intensify, and the kitchen becomes a haven of culinary delight. Pour in 2 cups of chicken or veggie stock, deglazing the wok's bottom. Add the cubed tofu, stirring carefully to maintain its square shape. Bring it all to a gentle boil. Meanwhile, create a slurry of 1 tablespoon of cornstarch and 2 tablespoons of water. Pour this into the boiling mapo tofu base while stirring delicately. This step is crucial, as the cornstarch mixture works its thickening magic exactly where it's needed. Garnish your creation with chopped green onions and an extra sprinkle of Sichuan peppercorn powder. Serve this culinary masterpiece with warm cooked rice, and let the symphony of flavors unfold on your palate. Mapo Tofu, where tradition meets innovation, and every bite tells a tale of Sichuan's rich culinary heritage. Get ready to savor the extraordinary. The allure of Chengdu Hot Pot, an experience that's not just a meal but a symphony of flavors dancing in a bubbling cauldron. As you step into Chengdu, the irresistible aroma of this culinary masterpiece envelops the city. Chengdu Hot Pot is a gastronomic delight that demands attention. It's a captivating blend of numbing, spicy, refreshing, and aromatic notes. Picture this, the tantalizing scent wafting through the air, inviting you to indulge in a culinary adventure like no other. In the bustling hot pot restaurants of Chengdu, a sensory feast awaits. Multiple soup bases vie for your attention, with the numbing and spicy varieties taking center stage. Infused with chili, prickly ash seeds, thick broad bean sauce, fermented soya beans, and more, these broths are a symphony of spice. Ginger and garlic, the unsung heroes of Chengdu's hot pot, lend their aromatic charm, eliminating any lingering fishy odors and intensifying the spicy seasonings. A hint of crystal sugar adds a touch of sweetness, creating a delicate aftertaste that balances the fiery spice. But beware! my fellow food adventurers, for within this cauldron lies the mighty Sichuan pepper. Choose your ingredients wisely, for adding them to the boiling pot is an art. A word of caution, those innocuous looking peppercorns are not dried grapes. In my naivety, I mistook them once and was greeted with a symphony of spice and a numbing sensation that lingered through the night. 
my local friends still fondly recount that fateful evening, and I, author, Brendan, blush at the memory. So, as you embark on your hot pot journey, relish the experience. Choose your ingredients, savor the broth, and tread lightly on the path of Sichuan peppers. Chengdu Hot Pot awaits, a culinary adventure that leaves an indelible mark on your taste buds and, perhaps, a spicy tale to tell. Indulge your taste buds in a fiery dance with Zhao Shu and red chili sauce, a Sichuan culinary marvel that elevates wontons to a whole new level. This isn't your typical wonton in a light broth, it's a flavor-packed experience that leaves an unforgettable impression. Picture this, delicate wontons, perfectly boiled to tender perfection, ready to be adorned with a symphony of flavors. As the Zhao Shu emerges from its hot bath, a ritual unfolds. The secret lies in the artful pouring of a rich concoction, soup, soy sauce, vinegar, salt, ground pepper, mashed garlic, and the pièce de résistance, chili oil. And voila, you have before you the masterful creation, Zhao Shu and red chili sauce. Get ready to tantalize your taste buds and discover why Zhao Shu and red chili sauce is a revered dish in the heart of Chengdu. It's a journey worth savoring a tale told through every spice-infused fold of these delectable wontons. One of the secrets to making these awesome wontons comes with the filling. We start off with some pork mince and then add the flavorings. Spring onions. Finely grated ginger. A good pinch of white pepper. One quarter cup of chicken stock. Little bit of cornstarch. Two tablespoons of grated carrot. 1 egg and salt to mix vigorously. Tremendous! It's now time to fold our wonton dumplings. Add a little mixture to the corner of the wonton wrapper. Fold that over and just keep rolling till you almost reach the end and then press in the sides. Put a little water on the edge and bring them together. Place them on a tray with a little cornstarch on it to prevent the wontons from sticking. You can of course, freeze these for later. Here's another way to fold the wontons. Both ways look stunning. Now for the sauce. We are going to use a homemade chili oil. It's infused with star anise, Sichuan peppercorns and cinnamon. All these, add something special to the sauce. Make sure you get some of that chili powder with the chili oil. Add some soy sauce. Some vinegar. And then the tiniest hint of garlic. Peel the garlic clove and shave just a few little gratings. Add finely chopped spring onion. Finely slice the stems and leaves of some fresh coriander. Yum! This sauce looks and smells amazing. It's now time to drop some wontons into boiling water. Give them 4 to 5 minutes until they are cooked through. Remove the wontons and strain them off. Place them straight into a bowl. Add a couple of tablespoons of the wonton broth to the sauce we made. Generously lace the wontons with the sauce. Finally, a little sprinkle of sesame seeds and that my friends, is the perfect wonton dish. If that's not heaven, I don't know what is. The flavor journey is nothing short of spectacular. 
It's a dance of spice, a medley of sensations that titillate the palate. The burnt aroma, the robust essence of dregs of fat, and the garlicky embrace, all harmonize to create a symphony of taste. Adjusting the intensity is an art form in itself. Desire a bolder kick? Amp up the sauce. Craving a milder touch? Let the soup take center stage. The power is in your hands to customize this Chengdu classic to your taste preferences. To embark on this culinary adventure, I highly recommend seeking out specialized snack bars in Chengdu. These hidden gems are a gastronomic haven, transporting you to a world where each bite is a celebration of tradition and innovation. Embark on a daring culinary adventure with spicy rabbit heads, a sensory delight hailing from the vibrant streets of Chengdu. Picture a symphony of flavors, spiced, numb and spicy, salty, and a tantalizing touch of sweetness. This dish is not just a treat for the taste buds but a testament to the rich culinary tapestry of Chengdu. Our journey begins in the Shuangliu district, where decades ago, a mother's love for her son and his fondness for rabbit heads sparked the creation of spicy rabbit heads. Imagine a quaint shop of spicy hot pot owned by this kind-hearted mother. She ingeniously crafted this dish by immersing rabbit heads in the aromatic broth of spicy hot pot, a gesture of love that captivated the neighborhood's palate. As whispers of this culinary masterpiece spread, Shuangliu Lao Ma emerged as the time-honored haven for spicy rabbit heads, now boasting several branches in Chengdu's bustling downtown. Each bite tells a tale of tradition, a legacy born out of a mother's love and culinary prowess. The preparation is an art in itself, rabbit heads soaked and quick boiled before dancing in a fragrant concoction of multiple spices. To achieve the coveted numb and spicy allure, they gracefully soak in a fiery sauce for hours, infusing every morsel with an irresistible kick. Chengdu locals, known for their discerning palates, hold a deep affection for this dish. And, after much encouragement and personal experience, I can wholeheartedly vouch for it, a culinary escapade that beckons the bold. Spicy rabbit heads are not just a must-try, they are an invitation to immerse yourself in Chengdu's culinary legacy, a journey into the heart of flavors that linger on the lips and in the memories of those fortunate enough to savor this extraordinary delicacy. Delight your senses with a Chengdu classic, Chengdu sliced beef and ox organs in chili sauce. A masterpiece dating back to the 1930s, this cold dish is a symphony of flavors, spicy, aromatic, and uniquely numbing. Imagine a culinary canvas where pot stewed scalps, hearts, tongues, and tripe of ox are meticulously sliced into delicate, paper-thin pieces. These tender morsels become the centerpiece, adorned with a tantalizing sauce that harmonizes the bold notes of chili oil, ground peppers, and a medley of secret condiments. This appetizing creation, hailed as a culinary gem, holds the prestigious title of Appetizer of the Year by GQ magazine in the USA in 2017. A testament to its global appeal, this dish transcends borders to captivate taste buds with its exquisite blend of textures and flavors. As you savor each bite, the dish unfolds like a culinary sonnet, the spicy warmth, the aromatic dance of spices, and the subtle numbness that follows. It's not just a meal, it's an experience that beckons you into the heart of Chengdu's rich gastronomic heritage. Sliced beef and ox organs in chili sauce, an appetizing journey that transcends time, a dish that has stood the test of culinary evolution, earning its rightful place as a celebrated delicacy both in Chengdu and across the oceans. If you like Sichuan cuisine, you should definitely give this a try. Here are the ingredients that I am going to use today, boneless beef shank, beef heart and two kinds of beef tripe, honeycomb tripe and book tripe. The book tripe is easy to identify. The thin layers look like a book. This is my favorite tripe out of all four kinds that are available. It's got that nice crunchy texture, put everything in the big pot. The heart, the shank and two kinds of tripe. Soak them in clean room temperature water for at least three hours. If you have time, you can let it sit in the fridge overnight. Animal organs usually have an unpleasant smell so soaking them certainly will help to remove that. Cover it and let it sit for at least three hours. While waiting, 
you have plenty of time to prepare the spices. You will need, 2 pieces of star anise, 1 piece of cinnamon stick, 2 pieces of bay leaves, 1 piece of black cardamom which should be slightly crushed, 2 teaspoons of Sichuan peppercorn, half teaspoon of fennel seeds, 2 pieces of cloves, 3 pieces of red dry chilies, 1 piece of dried galangal root, 4 pieces of Camphoria galanga, it is also known as sand ginger. You can put all the spices into a spice bag or a mesh ball that is ideal for spices. I have added a link in the description to this product. If you are interested, go check it out. Now let's return to the soaking ingredients. Take everything out of the pot and discard all the colored water. Put all the beef parts back into the pot except the book tripe. Why? Because book tripe only needs less than 2 minutes cooking. Just keep soaking it in clean water and set it in the fridge, while the other ingredients are braising. Fill the pot again with clean water and boil. Take everything out and switch to a new pot. Pour in 2 liters of boiling hot water along with the spices that we have prepared before. Throw in 2 pieces of scallion, some ginger slices, some garlic cloves. Add 3 tablespoons of soy sauce, 3 tablespoons of Shaoxing wine, 2.5 tablespoons of sugar, 2.5 teaspoons of salt. Drizzle in a teaspoon of dark soy sauce for the color. Taste and adjust the saltiness. Turn the heat to low and simmer for 1.5 hours. You might be wondering when should we cook the book tripe? Technically you can cook it anytime but I prefer to wait until the pot of beef and offal has simmered for 1.5 hours. You might be wondering when should we cook the book tripe? Technically you can cook it anytime but I prefer to wait until the pot of beef and offal has simmered for 1.5 hours. This way you can cook the book tripe in the flavorful brine. Move it around to make sure it cooks evenly in less than a minute. Take it out. Use scissors and separate the book type layers. Now put the book trip in the fridge. Let's get back to the pot. Turn off the heat and let everything sit in the brine until it is completely cooled down. This will take about 6 hours. Now would be the time to make the required chili oil but on this occasion, I already have some prepared. If you want to check out an amazing and delicious Sichuan chili oil recipe, please subscribe to find it. Now let's focus on the sauce. You will need 8 cloves of garlic. Use a garlic presser or a grater. Add some salt and 1 teaspoon of sugar to the grated garlic. Mix them well. The salt and sugar will help to change the texture of the garlic. In about 2 minutes of mixing, it should become a garlic paste. Add 2 tablespoons of Chinese black vinegar. Keep mixing it then pour in 1 cup of the brine. This is the key of the sauce. The brine has been simmered for 1.5 hours. It is now full of the spices and the meat flavor. Give it a taste to adjust the saltiness. You may find it saltier than what you normally like but that bodes well for the end result. When the flavor is right, you can add the chili oil. You can use less but don't even think about skipping the chili oil. The sauce doesn't taste good without it. The hotness from the chili is not the main thing that we are looking for. The complex aroma and flavors in the oil are the keys that bring this dish to another level. Set the sauce aside. Let's talk quickly about Chinese celery. The stem part is much skinnier compared to regular celery but it smells 10 times stronger, which is why we love to use it in this dish. It refreshes your mouth and balances the tanginess. When the celery is old or looking too green, that means it is very fibery and stringy, which is not what you want. Definitely buy the lighter color celery. Discard the leaves. 
Cut the celery with an angle? Chinese celery can be hard to find at times, so substitute with cilantro. If you are one of those people who hate cilantro, you can use shredded cucumber. Not a problem at all. The pot is completely cooled down now. Let's take a look. It just came out of the fridge so the grease is solid. Get a strainer to fish that out. Take the tripe, shank and the beef heart out. Slice all the meat into thin pieces. If you are wondering, why do I need to wait for the meat to cool down? Can this dish be served hot? Here are the answers. Yes, you can serve this dish hot, but you won't be able to slice the meat thinly. It will fall apart because it's too tender. When the temperature is cold, the meat will have a firm but still tender texture and be easy to slice thin. Once you have a layer of meat in order, you can just randomly fill up the rest of the space with the meat. Then put some celery on the top. This recipe is enough to serve 5 to 6 people. Cover the bowl with a plate. Flip it over. Garnish it with cilantro. Pour the sauce over it. As we bring our culinary exploration to a close, we've delved into the fiery world of sliced beef and ox organs and chili sauce. Each slice tells a tale of Chengdu's bold flavors, where the rich tapestry of spices transforms a simple dish into a gastronomic masterpiece. We hope you've enjoyed this journey through Sichuan's culinary heritage, savoring the complex interplay of flavors and the cultural nuances woven into each bite. From the sizzling chili-infused sauce to the tender slices of beef and ox organs, this dish is a testament to Chengdu's culinary prowess. If you've relished this culinary adventure, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Stay tuned for more delectable episodes, as we continue to explore the world's culinary wonders and pair them with the perfect wine selections. Thank you for joining us on this flavor-packed journey. Until our next adventure, this is Travel Food Wine, signing off with a spice-laden farewell. Happy cooking, and may your kitchen always be filled with the spirit of Chengdu's vibrant culinary traditions. Cheers! Our next culinary adventure takes us to the vibrant streets of Chengdu, where we're about to unravel the delicious mystery of Chuan Chuan Xiong. Now, what makes Chuan Chuan Xiong so unique? Imagine a delightful parade of skewers, each one a flavor-packed masterpiece. Chuan Chuan Xiong, also known as skewer hot pot or stick food, is a street food sensation that captures the heart and taste buds of Chengdu locals and visitors alike. Picture this, a variety of fresh ingredients, from succulent meats to vibrant vegetables, threaded onto small bamboo sticks, ready to take a flavorful plunge into a simmering cauldron of spicy broth. It's a communal experience, a social affair where friends gather around bubbling pots, eagerly awaiting their skewers to cook to perfection. But the magic doesn't stop there. What sets Chuan Chuan Xiong apart is the array of dipping sauces that accompany this culinary adventure. Tangy, spicy, and sometimes slightly sweet, these sauces elevate the skewers to new heights, creating a symphony of flavors that dance on your palate. As you navigate through the bustling streets of Chengdu, you'll encounter lively Chuan Chuan Xiong stalls, each with its own unique twist on this beloved dish. From the sizzling sounds of skewers hitting the hot pot to the aroma of spices wafting through the air, Chuan Chuan Xiong is a feast for the senses. So, get ready to immerse yourself in the world of Chuan Chuan Xiong, a delightful journey where every skewer tells a story, and each bite is a celebration of Chengdu's rich culinary tapestry. Stay tuned as we take a closer look and experience all the flavors coming together in this extraordinary street food delight. Chuan Chuan, a beloved treasure of Chengdu, embodies more than just a meal, it's a symphony of flavors that brings friends and family together. As we've discovered, each ingredient, carefully chosen and skewered on bamboo sticks, becomes a part of this communal feast. There are two enchanting variations of Chuan Chuan that Chengdu locals adore, in the first, akin to a personalized hot pot experience, patrons immerse their skewers into a simmering broth right at their table, crafting their culinary adventure. The second, 
a masterful creation by the skilled chef, graces the table with perfectly cooked delights ready to be savored. Whether you're the architect of your culinary journey or entrusting the chef's expertise, Chuan Chuan offers a delightful array of choices, from succulent meats to vibrant vegetables, ensuring every bite is a celebration of personal taste. You are now going to experience one way of cooking Chuan Chuan. It will show you how to make a classic Sichuan street food, Chuan Chuan with chili oil. It's basically a bunch of skewered stuff, soaked for hours, in stock and chili oil. Now, the whole essence here is that you can really soak whatever you want, but the critical constant is that chili oil soup. At its core, that soup is six part stock, which is cooked together with some fried aromatics, spices, and some Sichuan chili bean paste, and one part of a good quality Sichuan chili oil. So, because we need stock anyway, we chose shredded whole poached chicken as one of our main skewers. This guy's 1.5 kilos, and a little bigger, a little smaller would be totally fine. Put that in 3.5 liters cool water, and because we're making a stock out of this in the end, we'll also amp things up with an extra chicken carcass and a bit of pork bones. Totally optional, but it definitely makes a difference. Now add one leek cut into 3 inch sections and about 3 inches sliced ginger together with 30 grams dried chilies. These are Sichuan Arjun cow chilies, but you could totally use arbols or heaven facing, or really whatever dried chilies you got around. Now add 1 tablespoon Sichuan peppercorn, cover, and bring that up to a boil. Once boiling, bring that down to a simmer, cover, and let that poach till the chicken's 90% done. Remove the chicken and let it cool down. Skim out your chilies and your Sichuan peppercorns, and let that boil off for an indeterminate amount of time. A proper stock would go for another 4 hours, till reduced by half. As that's going, once your chicken's cooled down to room temperature, we can shred it. Work on the thighs and wings first, then the breast, and then you can leave the carcass be. We'll toss that back in with our stock. Once the stock's to your liking, portion out 1.5 liters of it. You can save the rest, it'll have a slight spiciness from the chilies, and would totally work great in something like a mapo tofu. And now, we can break out the wok and make our final soup. As always, first, Lang Yao. Get that wok piping hot, shut off the heat. Add in 3 tablespoons Sichuan chili bean paste. Fry that for about 2 minutes, till you see that the oil itself is stained to obviously red. Then go in with 1 leek cut into 3 inch sections and a 3 inch knob of ginger cut into slices. Fry for about a minute till fragrant, then add in the spices. This is 3 cinnamon sticks, 10 star anise, 50, 15 grams shayong, aka san ginger, and you can sub and dried galangal if you can't find this. 3 black cardamom pods, and 1 tablespoon Sichuan peppercorns. Fry those for about a minute till fragrant, then swirl in 1 tablespoon Liao Jiu, aka Shaoxing wine. Fry that for a minute or so, then go in with your stock. Cover and bring to a boil. Once it's at a boil, bring it down to a simmer and let that go uncovered for 20 minutes. As that's bubbling away, let's assemble our bowl. This is really a large bowl here, 2.5 liters, and you could totally use a pot instead if you don't own anything similar. Toss in 3 cloves chopped garlic, 3 tablespoons salt, 3 tablespoons sugar, and because this is the Hungayu flavor profile, you can't forget the MSG. Add in about a half teaspoon, then go in with 2 tablespoons peanut butter and 1 tablespoon sesame paste. You'd also want to toss in a half tablespoon Sichuan peppercorn powder in here too. Now use a strainer and carefully pour in the soup. Give it a good stir for a couple minutes to make sure it's not boiling hot anymore, then go in with 250 grams of Sichuan chili oil. Top it off with a tablespoon toasted sesame oil and a nice handful toasted sesame seeds, and this is ready for some skewers. So the skewers that we went with were that shredded chicken from before, some store-bought beef balls cut in half and blanched till they floated, some button mushrooms cut in half and blanched for 2 minutes, broccoli cut into florets and blanched for about a minute, potato peeled thinly sliced and blanched for 45 seconds, wheat gluten blanched for about 3 minutes, and lotus root peeled thinly sliced and blanched for about 30 seconds. But, again, you can really toss whatever you want in here. 
Position the skewers nicely and let them soak for an hour or up to three. And there you have it, a glimpse into the world of Chuan Chuan, a culinary delight with infinite possibilities. What you've witnessed is just one interpretation of this beloved dish, where the true magic lies in the symphony of flavors encapsulated in its soul-warming soup and the tantalizing embrace of chili oil. In essence, Chuan Chuan is a canvas for culinary exploration, weaving together a tapestry of diverse flavors and cooking styles. Whether you choose to immerse it in the communal experience of hot pot or revel in the fiery embrace of the special chili oil, each bite is a journey of perfection. So, as you embark on your Chuan Chuan adventure, savor the freedom it offers, a dish that transcends conventions, inviting you to create your own masterpiece. The key, after all, lies not just in the preparation but in the joy of savoring this culinary marvel. Whichever path you choose, rest assured, it's the perfect way to experience the rich tapestry of flavors that define Chuan Chuan. Welcome, fellow food enthusiasts, to a tantalizing adventure into the heart of Sichuan cuisine. Today, we're unraveling the secrets of a beloved dish, Sichuan Spicy Diced Rabbit. Imagine succulent rabbit meat, infused with the bold flavors of Sichuan peppercorns, red peppers, and green chilies, all dancing harmoniously in a symphony of spice. Let's now go through the instructions for making this wonderful dish. The meticulous preparation involves decapitating the boiled rabbit, delicately slicing it into bite-sized dices, approximately 2 cm, 0.8 inches, in dimension. Thoroughly wash the rabbit pieces and rinse well. Put the rabbit in a pot of water and bring to the boil. Wrap 4 spring onions into a circular bundle. Crush 1 thumb ginger. We are going to boil the rabbit for 15 minutes. Once the water is boiling, add the rabbit and pour in a splash of Shaoxing wine. Add the spring onion bundle and crushed ginger to the rabbit for about 5 to 7 minutes, and then remove. Skim regularly to remove impurities. After 15 minutes, remove the rabbit. Whilst the rabbit is finishing the boiling process, let's prepare the required ingredients. Chop 100 grams of dried red chili. Slice ginger into thin strips, julienne, as shown. Chop fresh garlic as shown. Chop 5 green chili into half centimeter pieces. Chop 1 red pepper into small pieces as shown. 1 tablespoon of Sichuan pepper corns, 2 bay leaves. By this time the rabbit should be ready. Remove the blanched rabbit from the water and pat dry. Heat oil in a wok or pan. Fry the rabbit pieces until lightly golden brown and crispy on the edges. It's now time to spice things up. Add the Sichuan peppercorns for that distinctive flavor. Introduce the sliced and diced red peppers and chopped green chilies. Stir-fry until they start to soften. Ensuring each piece is coated in the spice-infused mixture. Continue to cook until the rabbit is fully infused with the bold flavors. The dish is ready to be enjoyed. Garnish with a sprinkle of sesame seeds and chopped spring onions and sesame seeds for that final touch of freshness and crunch. Plate your Sichuan spicy diced rabbit and get ready to impress your taste buds with this spicy delight. As we bid farewell to the aromatic clouds of spice and the tantalizing dance of flavors, we've unlocked the mysteries of Sichuan spicy diced rabbit together. Each bite, a celebration of the rich tapestry of Sichuan cuisine, where spice is not just a flavor but an experience. Whether you've joined us in your kitchen or simply savored the experience through the screen, we hope this journey has sparked a newfound appreciation for the bold and vibrant flavors of Chengdu. If you relish this culinary adventure, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more flavorful episodes. Until our next rendezvous in the world of global cuisine, 
This is Travel Food Wine, signing off with a sprinkle of green onions and a dash of spice. Happy cooking! Elevate your dessert experience with the delightful simplicity of Chengdu Ice Jelly, a sweet and refreshing finale that gracefully balances the fiery spice beloved by Chengdu locals. In a city known for its fiery palate, Ice Jelly emerges as the perfect culinary soother, offering a delightful respite for the stomach after indulging in the bold and spicy flavors of Sichuan cuisine. It's light, refreshing and basically the definition of a great summer dish. So we wanted to show you two sorts. First, a nutty, syrupy one called Hong Tang Bing Fen, which is probably the most classic. Then show you some Lashan style Sang Zion Bing Fen with lemon and rice balls, which is my personal favorite variety. So to get started with Bing Fen Ice Jelly, you'll need Bing Fen Ice Jelly Seeds. Show you how to make it with this stuff. Cantonese Clear Grass Jelly, which should be available at most Chinese supermarkets. So clear jelly up first process is easy enough. First, just mix 10 grams of your powdered jelly with 125 milliliters of water and set that aside. Then just grab a saucepan, toss in 625 milliliters of water and bring it all up to a boil. So then just pour it into something heat proof. Let it cool to roughly room temperature and toss that in the fridge for at least 4 hours. Next the seeds. While I do know that these will probably be unavailable for most of you. We did want to show you the process anyway because it is quite cool. So first, we'll be tossing 50 grams of our shoe fly seeds on a cloth and twisting it closed. You got to make sure that you don't go too tight here though. Something like this is perfect. Then just dip that in 1.25 liters of bottled water and let it soak for 10 minutes. After that time, you should be able to see some jelly-like substance oozing out of your seed bag when you squeeze it. That gel will thicken this water. But we need to do a bang up job scrubbing this thing to get it all out. What we're doing here is extracting the pectin from the seeds which does take a bit of patience. You'll be done once the bag is no longer slimy to the touch, which should be about 8 to 10 minutes worth of thorough scrubbing. Now, to give the jelly a proper bite, mix it with some calcium hydroxide, aka pickling lime. So in a separate bowl, mix 3 grams or about 3 quarters of a teaspoon of lime together with 250 milliliters of water. Mix and let that settle for about an hour. When adding that to the jelly, we'll just be adding the liquid here, not the powder at the bottom. So then just like the clear jelly, we can now toss that in the fridge for at least 4 hours. And overnight is also perfect. So next day. Now let's take a look at our bing fence. Now most obviously the one on the left made from the seeds has this really distinctive yellowish color. That's actually a telltale marker of a bing fen that's made from shoe fly. It's a bit firmer and toothier than the bing fen made from the powder, which is a bit more watery. That said, the saw on the right is also perfectly delicious. So either way, let's just show you how to dress those up. First up, the Hong Tang Bing Fen. There's a number of different directions that you can go with these toppings, but these days you'll usually find some rice cakes in the mix. Bing Fun also needs its namesake, the syrup. This stuff was made from 60 grams of dark brown sugar, 30 grams of rock sugar, and 180 grams of water. We've also got some watermelon cut into 1 inch cubes, some toasted peanuts lightly pounded in a mortar, a bit of toasted black sesame seeds, and a few raisins to finish it off. So to a bowl with 250 grams of your Bing Fan Ice Jelly. Toss in 2 tablespoons of the rice cake, 1 tablespoon of the toasted pounded peanuts, a half tablespoon of the toasted black sesame seeds, about 12 or so raisins, a quarter cup of your watermelon cubes and top it all off with 5 tablespoons of syrup. With that, the nutty, syrupy Hong Tang Bing Fen is good to go. Next up, the Lashan style lemony Sang Zion Bing Fen, which is not only our personal favorite, but also probably a bit easier logistically to whip up at home. To give this one a bit of texture, though, it'll need some of these sticky rice balls. Now you should be able to find these in the frozen section of your local Asian supermarket then. Besides that, we've also got some Laozao fermented glutinous rice. Most Asian supermarkets should carry this stuff, but quick warning that sometimes it seems to be labeled under the English name rice pudding. It's got a real mellow sweetness to it which will help balance out our lemon. Mix a teaspoon of sugar into a tablespoon of freshly squeezed lemon juice and add that to the bing fen. Next, top it off with 2 tablespoons of Leo Zhao about 2 to 3 tablespoons worth of your sticky rice balls and a couple slices of lemon. 
and that's honestly it a pretty easy, super refreshing bowl of lemon bing fan. Pack your bags and join us on the ultimate journey with travel food wine. As we jet set to exotic destinations all around the world, we'll immerse ourselves in the heart of its culture, uncover hidden gems, and of course, indulge in the finest local cuisines paired with exquisite wines. But the adventure doesn't stop there. Subscribe and hit the notification